Welcome to this UniLogic tutorial. UniLogic is the complete application development environment for Unitronics Unistream control platform. My name is Alex and today's tutorial is about indexed data tables. In this tutorial we will cover general data table requirements, data table structs and formatting tables, logic for using data table function blocks such as write row and read row, as well as clear, store, and load tables. We will also display and edit index table information on an HMI screen. I will start off building an example program for an index table in UniLogic. Using this type of data table, we will both read and write information to a table as well as display it on the HMI screen. In general, data tables use structs to configure the format of data tags within a table. Information that is written to and read from the data tables will have to use these structs uh, and they must use the same format. Uh, this is easy to create within UniLogic as these struct formats can easily be assigned to new global tags once it is set up. The first thing to do is set up a struct containing what information we will be using in our data table. First navigate to structs at the bottom of the screen and then select add new member. We can call this struct name data table format. And then select save. We can then add struct members. Uh, for this example, we can create uh, an ASCII string and call it name. Give it a string length of 10. We can also add a bit and call it bit status. As well as an integer and call it value one. This will comprise all the information that we'll use within our data table. Once we have the struct set up with the format we wish to use, we can then create the data table. We can then select data tables with a solution explorer on the left, navigate to data tables, and you can add a new table. Selecting this table configuration, we can assign this a name of table one. We can also assign a table type this will be a index data table. FIFO and LIFO are also an option and they are covered in another tutorial. You can also select the struct, uh, the column structure. Here's where we'll be selecting data, data table format. We can assign the amount of rows we want to use. For this example, we can use 10 rows. Uh, there is also an option if the data table is to be retained in the event of a power loss. This option should only be selected if necessary as it utilizes the retained memory which is not as large in capacity as the non-retained memory. If necessary we can reside or rearrange any of the columns. And now that our data table is set up we will want to both write information to and read information from the data tables. To do this we will need to create a matching global struct for each of these different commands. We then need to assign tags to hold the information that will be written to and read from the table. To do this, we will add new global tags within the tag window at the bottom of the screen. Navigate to global tags, select add new tag, and then we'll select the type. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see there's our data table format. And then we can assign a name for each of the structs that will follow this format. We can call one uh, write struct. And another read struct. This is then assigned global structs uh, using the same format as the data table. 
So we see here it has the name bit status and value one for both the write struct and the read struct. And to better demonstrate how the index data table is used uh, with these structs, I will open a project that already references these tags. In this example program, uh, once the proper structs are set up, it enables us to write information to and read information from our data table. If you navigate in the toolbox to data table index, it lists all the available options to uh, read and write rows as well as store, load, and clear entire tables. We've already set up the information in this program. I'll go over exactly how each function block is configured. To write information, I pulled the write row to data table index from the toolbox. There's a couple different inputs. What it wants to know is A, uh, this is the selection for which data table you're writing to. Uh, we are going to be writing to table one. So you see it's automatically selected. It also wants to know the source struct uh, that contains the information we wish to write. This will be the write struct that we created. And we'll also want to know uh, the row index uh, for what row is going to be written to the data table. Um, and another tag was created and we labeled this write row number. This program is set to automatically increment the row number after each write command and then reset back to zero when the row index reaches 10. To read information, we select the read row from data table index. It also wants to know uh, the selection of which data table you are reading from. Also the row index that is going to be read from the data table. And then the source struct that the information is going to be sent to. Here's where we reference the read struct that will hold the information that we previously created. To clear an entire data table, you need only to select the clear data table index function block and select which table to clear. We only have one table, we call it data table one or table one. To store a data table, first it wants to know uh, which data table you want to store. We're referencing table one. It wants to know the starting row in the source file. And also a target file name that is going to be saved for that specific uh, data table index. It also wants to know how many rows from the data table are going to be saved. Our table is only 10 rows. So I put in a value of 10. Also possible is putting in zero, which will then save the entire table. The other input is a selection to append or overwrite. Zero will overwrite the file, while one will append the information. You can also create a CSV file if necessary. Uh, by default, no C CSV file is created, but selecting a value of one for this input will create a CSV file. And finally, there's a character selection for delimiter when you do create a CSV file. For this function block, there's also a status message tag that you can assign. I simply call this one store data table status. And finally, to load a data table, we also select the load data table index from file function block. The first input wants to reference what source data table that you will display. Similarly, it wants to know the starting row to load the data table in the PLC table. And the name of the data table that you're loading that you previously saved. It also wants to know the starting row in the source file, what row you want to start loading from and then the amount of rows you want to load. This also has a specific status just for this function block. I assigned another tag and called it load data table status. 
And then after the logic is set up, it can be referenced on the HMI screen. Each of these different functions has a corresponding button linked to a bit on the main screen. I'll show you how this example was set up. I can then navigate to the main HMI screen that was previously created. This HMI screen uses the uh, structs and function blocks we set up previously. The information in the top left is linked to different tags within the right struct. Here we can see the tag link is from the right struct. This was for the name. The same is for the bit status, as well as value 1. Also referenced here is the row to right which was listed in the right row function block. The bottom of the screen also references the different information that is going to be read. And buttons are also displayed to run each of the different function blocks within the logic. Uh, one HMI element I would like to point out is the ability to display an entire index data table on the screen. This is found in the toolbox under data tables. Uh, when selected, this can be dragged onto the screen. All you need to do is select which table you want to reference. This will be table 1. Uh, please note there is a minimum size of 300 by 380 pixels for this HMI element. Uh, the table can then be directly viewed and edited from the screen once the program is downloaded. And scroll buttons also enable the user to view information that may not all directly fit within the viewable space on the table. I can now connect to the Unistream that has had this project downloaded already using a VNC viewer to demonstrate the different index data table functions. I used a free VNC viewer to connect to this controller over Ethernet. It does look exactly the same as the HMI screen we previously set up. Now what I can do is enter some information for the name, bit, and value 1 to write to the table. For example, I can call this test1. We can turn the bit on and give it a value of 111. I can then write this information to the table. It's going to write to row 0. See the information is written in row 0, test 1, the bit's on, and the value is 111. I can then do this for a couple of extra rows. We're going to call the next row test 2. The bit can be off, and the value can be 222. I can then write this to the table. We can see the row is already prepared to write to row 1. And I can do the same for a third row. Make this value 333. And then I can write to the table again. I can then select a row to read the information from the table into the read struct, row 2 for example. So here I've selected the row to read. We want to read from row 2. And when I select read from table, test 3, the bit status, and the value 333 is loaded into our read struct. Also available is saving the entire table to the SD card. I can select store data table to file. I can then clear the entire table. When selected, it clears all the names, the bit statuses, and the values back to zero. And now if I press load the data table from file, it loads the file we've just saved. Also possible is directly editing the information from the HMI screen. Press the edit on button to edit, and then you can change the strings, bits, or numerical values. I want to change a bit status, maybe I want to change a number. 
or enter new information entirely. I hope this information was helpful. This concludes the tutorial about data tables, especially index tables. You can find more information and example applications on our website. Thank you for watching this tutorial. We hope to see you again.